Oh, let's see here. Banners. Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet and all things related to the carnivore diet. Welcome to today's live stream. Looks like we have uh, Twin Brook Acres. Hello, how are you doing today? Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's four people. Yes, yes, yes. A couple of quick things I wanted to go over. I was just, I just found some interesting... Uh, some interesting things. Uh, I was watching a Dr. Sivas video and he was talking about gastric bypass and he was saying that they do actually work, but they really only have about a two to three year life expectancy for how long they stay with their weight loss because, because they've never learned how to, uh, how to eat properly that they find ways around the smaller stomach and they uh and they end up gaining a lot of the weight back so you can let me know what you think about that um i had somebody ask about the randall cycle and you know i watched dr k or professor k many times explain this and the way I can sum it up best without getting into any trouble, not trying to do any sciencey stuff, because I, as you all know, I'm not a sciencey guy. Fat is good. Carbs are bad. Fat and carbs together are terrible. Okay, let's jump into the comments here real quick. We've got Pink Poppies here. Hello, Pink Poppies. How are you doing today? And D is here. Hey, you finally caught a live. I'm glad you're here, D. I really am. And we have uh, Brenda Bohannon, who is watching from Georgia. And Donna, is it cool you're alive? Yes, I am actually alive. I've managed to make it happen again. Almost midnight here. Have a good live show. Oh, I'm guessing it's probably about time for you to go to bed then, Bert. But thanks for sticking around for a bit. And we have uh, Sin Spain here, who I have always assumed was from Spain, but nice to have some verification. Let's see here. I'm getting a little behind. Let's see here. Oh, morning from Sydney, Australia. Hello, Lorraine. How are you doing today? And then there's Paula. Hello from Arizona. Glad to be here. How are you doing today, Paula? And Grateful Keto. Nice to see you too, Grateful Keto. I'm glad you're here. Hello, Madeline. And there's Ready, Set, Keto checking in, listening while making dinner. See, I'm going to have to listen to your live stream tonight because I have right here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cook that up after I get done doing this live, after I get done doing this live stream. And it must be all the meat and fat. He, yeah, it's, I'm sure it is. And Paula Berlin says, doing terrific thanks to this awesome community. We really do have a great community here, folks. It's, uh, I just can't tell you how pleased I am. Everybody jumping into the comments and offering suggestions to other people. It's, we've, we've got a great, great uh, community building here. And, yep, sounds about right. Son-in-law had gastric bypass, lost a lot of weight, but has been putting it back on lately. Yeah, that. From what I understand, that's not uncommon for people to regain the weight because they never learned how to eat properly in the first place. So let's see whatever what else do we have here. Um, 
I had somebody in the comments earlier asking um, if I'd ever heard of the blood type diet, and I hadn't really. And I did find a couple of references on Dr. Barry's channel where he says he doesn't really think it's a it's a thing. And I hadn't found anybody within the carnivore or keto space that thought it was you know, that it was a great thing. Now they also asked about DNA dieting, and I've heard Dr. Berry talk about this on many occasions, where you know, depending on where your ancestors were from, might make a you know might might have a little bit of impact on how well you handle certain foods. Like if you're from above the Arctic, if most of your ancestors are from someplace very cold, like above the, the Arctic Circle, then it's very likely that they didn't have any plants to eat most of the year. Whereas if you're from tropical regions, perhaps you can process fruits a little bit better. Me personally, as a carnivore, I don't eat any plants. No fruits, no vegetables, nothing. I eat meat. Well, you saw the big steak I had down there that I'm going to cook up for dinner tonight. Now, let's see here. We got some more people here. Yes, see, I, I, I agree with you, Pink Poppies, that it's not a real diet. Um, hello, Crafty and Carnivorish. How are you today? So did you get your water and steps in today yet, Crafty? And we've got a lot of people saying hi to everybody there. Well, thank you, Dee. Um, I think it's pretty amazing myself. Um, I, I I can't tell you how, how great it is to get out and walk on the trails or even just be able to stand up. I mean, it was it's been fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Still a little cruddy. Most of my steps and quite a bit of water. Yeah, that water will uh, will help you heal from other things too there, Crafty. So I hope you feel better soon. Good afternoon from cold Wisconsin. Yes, indeed. I was looking at the weather in Omaha and it's it's was cold there and cold in Wisconsin. And it's not exactly what I'd call warm down here in North Carolina. Um, it got down to 28 degrees last night, but it did warm up to 62 or so, and it's supposed to hit 70 again tomorrow, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of other people do that too, Grateful Keto. Tried cooking a frozen steak in the air fryer for the first time. Um, Dante over at Frigno's Freedom often keeps his steaks frozen and throws them in the air fryer and he says he likes them better that way so that's good yes the burrito family because you know the the for those of you that aren't aware ready set keto's last name is burrows and autocorrect corrects them to burrito um it's it's kind of pretty funny Yes, Scandinavian, Norwegian, I have the highest amount of Neanderthal DNA possible, so bring on the Flintstones Bronto rib. Yes, yes, indeed. See, I've figured out a few things. You know, I, I, I now have the ability to put comments on the screen. Um, so we'll see. It's it Actually, it's good because it makes them bigger so I can read them. Um, before, because last time, if you remember, I was uh, squinting down at the screen to try and read the comments there. And somebody just checked in. Ah, V. Bob Willie. Hello from Georgia. Hello. How's everything down there in Georgia tonight? And, oh, there's Sally. Hello, Sally Lee. How you doing tonight? Glad you made it. 31. Wow, we're up to 31 already. Amazing. Yeah, Paula says she cooks steaks from Frozen. They are terrific. 
And Tom says he loves onions, at least five a week. Okay, I, I see nothing wrong with that. If it's working for you, eat your onions. I've always said, you know, I'm not dogmatic about, oh, that's not carnivore. You can't have that. Hey, if what you're eating works for you, then there is no reason to change. And let's see here. We got, oh, another one from Melbourne, Australia. Good morning, Leslie. How are you today? And if I remember right, things are reversed down in Australia. So you guys are just coming into the summer months where we're just heading into the winter months here. Is that correct? Did you walk the car park or trail today? I just did a couple of laps around the building here um, because I already have tomorrow's video uploaded and in the queue ready to release tomorrow. I did tomorrow's walking video yesterday. I'm taking my Fridays as uh, when I do live streams. I'm taking those as my one day of rest because I've been getting to the five, six, seven mile mark every day. I felt like I was starting to wear down a little bit. So I decided to try and take one day off a week. And so today I did go out and I walked a couple laps around the building just to keep things loosened up. But I did not, uh, I did not go out on an extended walk because I feel at the six plus mile mark, that's about where I probably need to take a break once a week just to let everything rest up. Debbie Dixon, first time seeing you live. You look amazing. I've been doing pretty good on carnivore for a couple of months and feeling great. I've learned so much from Dr. Barry also. Yes, indeed. Dr. Barry is a really good source of information. And I'm glad you're here, Debbie. I'll be going live pretty much every Friday night now. Um, I'm targeting ending at 5.15 because I was talking with James because they... James at Ready, Set, Keto, they go live at uh, 6.30 Eastern, and it's followed immediately by Hungry Heath. And I always have to miss the tail end of theirs or the beginning of Hungry Heath because I'm an old guy. I got to go to the restroom once in a while. So I decided to do mine. I'm going to target ending at 5.15 well, 6.15 Eastern, my, my computer still says I'm in the central time zone, even though I'm not. And uh, I figure that give everybody, because three hours straight without any kind of a break can be kind of tough. So I decided to go on the quarter after mark to give everybody that little 15 minute break to grab a snack or cook a steak or go to the restroom or whatever you need to do, refill your water. Um, whatever it is you have to do before you sit down and watch Ready, Set, Keto's live stream. And we'll see how it works out. I think it's going to be okay. Yep, I was right. Correct. First day of summer was 1st of December. So it just started summer down there in Australia. Let's see here. Oops, I think I missed a couple of comments there. And that wasn't the one I wanted to click on it jumped up on me. Oh, thanks. I still have some hanging fat I need to get rid of. Well, it's actually loose skin, I think, now. Yes, indeed, Pink Poppies. Hit that like button. Excellent. And we're up to 35. That's pretty awesome. 35 people. I can't believe 35 people want to watch this live. Let alone one of you. Let's see here. I thought I'd let you know that I enjoy when you have the trail cam on when you're walking. Yeah, I I really like that. Um, I, I like the trail cam. I like it a lot. It does extend the edit quite a bit, um, but I'm retired. I got nothing else to do, so I might as well do that. Well, thank you, Donna. I'm glad you're here. This is actually 
only my second live stream. I did that one, what was that, a couple of weeks ago, and that went very, very well. So I've been working out the logistics of when I was going to do this live stream, and uh, I came up with Friday afternoon, Friday evening, depending on where you're at. And then for those of you that are in watching the replay over in uh, the UK, I know I have several subscribers in Poland and throughout the Europe area. So one day a month, I'm going to get up in the morning and do a live stream, probably about 11, sometime between 11 and 1130, because that'll make it like 530 in the afternoon over there. I may even go a little bit later to catch Poland. I may try to do it at like one in the afternoon, which will make it, you know, seven o'clock in UK and eight o'clock in Poland. And that should give everybody time to get home from work and, and tune in. So, you know, I'm trying to arrange the schedule so that everybody get a, gets a chance to ask questions if they want to. Let's see here. And Donna's uh, Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada. Let's see here. Vicki, I'm glad you didn't miss my live as well. I'm glad you remembered it. I'm glad you're here. Vbop Willie with Carnivore for five weeks tomorrow. OMAD the last few weeks. Down 18 pounds. Happy if I lose another 25, but my goal is 65 more. Just keep pushing forward. You know, and we can come up with these ideal weights that we think we ought to be, but let carnivore decide because when as you approach your ideal weight, you won't lose any more weight. You will not get unhealthy small on this diet. Um, on this way of eating, on this way of life. It, it will balance itself out so that if you are underweight, you will actually gain weight eating this way. And if you're overweight, you'll lose weight. Plus all, and that's just the side effect. All the other health benefits that go with this are truly astounding. And Patty Roberts made it. Hello, Patty. How are you tonight? Oh. Just took another jump rope to 39. Everybody hit that like button. Let's see here. If I got any of these things. Ah, uh, there we go. Yes. Subscribe. Um, let's see here. Let's leave that one running. Now let's get back into the comments here. Thanks for link, linking that link, uh, Crafty. That's very nice. But yes, indeed. Um, oh, and I forgot to say, you know, go back to this comment for just a minute. Down 18 pounds. You're on your way. That deserves a high five and a fist bump. Good job. Let's see here. Yes, Bob, the walks have really grown in those steps, plus ballet. Yeah, for those of you that didn't see that, I attempted to do some ballet the other night just to fulfill um, my promise to two crazy ketos. That won't be happening again anytime real soon on the channel. Do I eat butter? Um, I add butter to my ground beef. when I Because I overcook it a little bit, I like it crispy. I tend to add some butter to top of that and let it melt over the, the ground beef to get extra fat back in. And I cook in butter. Like I've got about a quarter stick of butter that I'll put in the pan to melt before I slap this steak down in it. Um, so, yes, I, but as far as like steak and butter, gal, grab a stick of butter and eat it, no. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. Watching from Erie, Pennsylvania. Hello, Chris. How are you tonight? I'm assuming it's probably snowing or or worse there in, in Erie, Pennsylvania. Let me get back to camp in May. So yeah, Erie, Pennsylvania is not a great place to be outside this time of year. 
Sana, hello, Sana. Happy Friday. YouTube notification failed me, so coming in a little late. Let's click that like button. Yeah, I'm, you know, even if you hit the notification bell that says you want them all, I've noticed that it's pretty hit and miss. Sometimes you get notifications, sometimes you don't. Um, but you can remember that this is the time I'll be live every Friday from, from here going forward. Um, so, so you can, you can make, make your plans around it. And of course, if you can't make it, I certainly understand. I don't expect anybody to rearrange their life just to listen to an, an old truck driver rant on about the carnivore diet. Yeah. And I see twin acre, twin brook acres is sending congrats to V Bob. Well, yeah, V Bob, you're doing really well. And I think I forgot twin brook. You you've lost 45 pounds about six months and now you're working on strengthening muscles. You're go moving forward. That deserves another high five and a fist bump. Good job. Okay. Paul wants to know, how's your sleep improved since going carnivore? Um, I can't really answer that question because before carnivore, I was knocked out with drugs every night and now that I'm not taking tons of pain pills anymore, I only I only have to dig into my pain pill bottle about once every four or five days now. And uh, so I still, I, you know, I, I forget what Dr. Barry called it, but I'm kind of a split sleeper. I'll fall asleep fairly early, about 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the evening, sleep for three or four hours, and then I get up and do stuff for a couple hours. And I sleep another three or four hours after that. I uh, so so that's that's so I can't really say that my sleep is better, but it's not being induced by massive amounts of drugs anymore. Let's see here. Still have high blood glucose. I'm ninety percent carnivore and fast forty two hours, two days. Help. Well, what are you eating that's not carnivore? Um, you know, that 10% can, can make a big difference depending on what it is that you're eating. Um, and the other thing I would suggest, now remember, I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. This is not medical advice. This is just Bob randomizing his thoughts, um, telling you what it might be from my perspective up to 46 Welcome to everybody. But the other thing that I would try is do an elimination diet because there may be some other foods that are technically carnivore that might be affecting your blood glucose. I would suggest trying a 30 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Um, or even like I do, try 30 days of lion diet, just ruminant meat, which is beef, um, bison, elk, deer. There's a lot of others, but there's not a, a lot of others. Lamb. Um, but just do those for 30 days. Just eat the meat, add the water, or drink the water, and add some salt, and see if that has an effect. And then you can slowly add the other foods back in, because uh, depending on where you're getting it, um, shrimp can have some carbs. Um, there's a lot of carnivore foods that can have some carb in them. Not many, but a few. And if your blood sugar isn't coming down, you're going to have to try a complete elimination diet. I would do just lion diet. I would go to, to beef, salt, and water for 30 days and see if that, um, if that helps bring it down. And then you'll know. Let's see here. Yes, I agree. The BMI scale is really good when you apply it to a group of people, whether you're talking about a town or a county or even a country. The BMI scale can give you a fairly good indication of what's going on within a certain group of people. But as an individual, 
um, as an individual scale, that's not really a great way to go because, uh, you know, because if you just, because it just basically goes off your height, your weight, and your age, which, you know, when Arnold Schwarzenegger won Mr. Universe, he was by the BMI scale obese, even though there was not an ounce of fat on him anywhere. It's, it just goes by height and weight. Yes, indeed, the waist height ratio is a very good way. And my favorite scale for figuring out, you know, everything with your height, your weight, and what your ideal weight is and all that is, how do you feel? If you feel good, don't worry about it. I mean, I feel pretty good. I'm not worrying about it. I did get on the scale to see if I'd done any damage over Thanksgiving and, and a little bit after that. And lo and behold, I'm now down another three pounds. So I just, I don't worry about the scale at all anymore, even the BMI. Although I am still looking forward, I'm getting very close to 191. 191 is the part where, is this break point where the BMI scale says I am no longer obese. I'm just overweight. So I'm kind of looking forward to being overweight. That'll be something new. Beef, just two meals, only one day, but it just happened. Awesome. You're moving forward, Sally. Let's see here. Patty Roberts, I hit 60 pounds loss this morning in four months. All right, Patty, that deserves a high five and a fist bump. Good job. Just keep pushing forward and don't pay that much attention to the scale as long as you feel great. That's all that really matters. I agree with you, Crafty. Yeah, I can't munch on a stick of butter. I just, I can't do it. I even, I tried a little bit. I was melting the butter over my ground beef last night. I just spear it with my fork and then kind of rub it all over the top of the ground beef so it melts all over the thing. And it looked like it was about done and there was a little... A little bit left on the fork so i stuck it in my mouth and ate it and it didn't make me gag or anything but it's not something i'd want to do on a regular basis Let's see here does anyone else have trouble eating enough meat i've been carnivore for a few weeks and i find meat so satisfying that i'm not hungry enough um i see a few people having um this problem I know it's going to be counterintuitive, but try adding a little more fat to it. But other than that, um, if you can't, you know, if you can't get down enough meat in one or two sittings, keep eating three meals a day for a while. Get, you know, you want to make sure you're getting plenty of nutrition into your body. And then once you, you get to the point where you know, okay, that's what I had. That's what I need for my total nutrition for the day. Then take that first meal, divide it in half, and split it between lunch and dinner, and just kind of slowly build up. Don't try to force the two meal or one meal a day. Start off eating three meals a day, and eventually you just won't be hungry for breakfast. But you find by skipping breakfast, you'll be a little hungrier for lunch. And just slowly build up going that way. Um, yeah, but I do see that a lot. Um, people having trouble eating enough meat. And I was watching a video with Sally Norton. And she said one of the biggest things that gets people into trouble doing, whether it be lion diet or carnivore or keto or whatever it is, um, is that they're just not eating enough. And they, they end up, you know, if you sit there and, and look at it all, they end up only eating, you know, 12 to 1500 calories. And that's just not enough. It's just not. You need to, you need to, you know, she was saying 1600 calories a day is bare minimum. But I have no idea how many calories I eat. Um, you know, I had two pounds of ground beef yesterday with about a half a stick of butter melted over it. So I have no idea how many calories that is, but 
I feel great today, so it must have been enough. Um, and I'm sure if if you can't, if that answer is not enough for you, grateful, go ahead and I would check out. Uh, I'm sure you already have, but I think Dr. Barry has a couple of videos about this. And uh, Steak and Butter Gal actually talks about that quite a bit as well, not being able to eat enough. Oh, what do I got here? Sally, upstate New York. No snow except Buffalo. Got to six and a half feet a few weeks ago. Yeah, Buffalo's kind of like that. They're right at the edge of the, the Great Lakes, so they get plenty of lake effect snow. Let's see here. Okay, let's see here. Oh, I'm missing a whole bunch of comments. Vicky, yeah, we were just talking about that a few minutes ago. The notifications are not uh, not what they should be, but you know, YouTube is always changing stuff too, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, I mean, I always see a lot of the same people commenting on my videos, but I really only have probably 35% of my views come from returning subscribers. So I'm getting other people to watch the videos, but the, the, the notifications and everything are sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Let's see here. What else? Have we oh, Jen. Jen Hendrickson, thank you so much for the super chat. My husband and I watch you daily. You always bring a smile to my face. Well, thank you, Jen. I'm glad you and your husband both watch daily. And uh, a $10 super chat certainly brings a smile to my face. Thank you very, very much. Um, you have no idea how much that means to me. But I'm glad you, you like my videos and I managed to bring a smile to your face. Although why anybody... Of course, it's probably you're just trying to watch the old guy struggle around the trail, and that makes you laugh. And I'm okay with that, whatever whatever it is. Um, yeah, well, in lighting the trailer, those are those are that's my main source of lighting when I'm not running my my camera lights. Um, I could get. You know, the, the puck lights or there are several other lighting solutions I could use to light my 5x10 cargo trailer. But these were like three bucks on Amazon and I got two strings of them. So when this one breaks, I can get another one in and I got plenty of batteries to plug them into. Um, I've got a 500 amp hour sitting underneath my feet here and a 250 over here sitting on top of the fridge uh, while the freezer so I have plenty of things to plug in USB ports to to give them power. So I saw no reason to try and do anything else more complicated. Yeah, I just, well, you can see right up oh, over there. Mm, right there. I never have bothered to, to, that's a zip tie. I never bothered to cut the ends off the zip ties, so there's zip ties all the way around. That's one of those things I've been meaning to get to, but just haven't gotten to. Okay. She likes eating Pluger brand butter. If I see in the store, I'll have to try it. Let's see here, JC. I have meat aversion if I go 100% carnivore. That's why I add some things like avocado, cauliflower, rice, etc. Um, yeah, if the if you're still eating, you know, rice, it doesn't take very much rice to equal a lot more carbs than you think it does. I would, like I said, to to drop your if you're still having glucose issues, you know, because if if you're having great success with what you're doing, then there's no reason to change. But um, I would try, you know, 
see if you can't cut the, the veggies back just a little bit. Um, like I said, to know for sure, do beef, butter, eight, bacon, and eggs for, for 30 days. Check your blood sugars then, see what happens. Yeah, and that's a good plan. I just eat when I'm hungry, but I don't eat anything after 7 p.m. And I've said in a few of my videos that I don't think it matters much when you eat as long as you're you're eating the right stuff. And I did. It wasn't anything bad, but Wednesday night I I had a great big roast because of going in and getting my laundry done very early in the morning and getting a video out and then taking a nap and going to church and all that. I didn't actually get around to start cooking until about 8.15, so it was after 9 o'clock when I finally got my roast done and ate it. And the only thing I noticed was I woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning and glad I had my access to the church bathroom. And we'll just leave it at that because... Uh, I had a little rumble gut going on from eating that late, but other than that, it wasn't wasn't a big deal. Here, what am I missing? Have you ever tried eating beef tallow instead of butter? I find it easier to eat and cook in. No, I have not. I have not. Um, there are a few. Um, steak and butter gal goes over that quite a bit. The tallow is probably the mildest of the added fats, but uh, it's it's a little on the expensive side. And I don't really have a way while I'm here. Now, when I'm at home, I have separate separate little mini crocks that I keep bacon grease and beef grease tallow and you know all my different greases and separate and i and i cook with those but i don't really have any way to save it here um so i just don't if i see some tallow at a reasonable price i may pick some up but uh butter is 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 still fairly cheap down here so that's what i've been using here. I can't get over this low fat mindset yet. I was low fat for three and a half decades. My doctor told me to have three eggs max a week. I won't mention next month that I'm eating about 30 eggs a week. Yes. And you just, I understand Sally. I mean, it's, it's what we were taught when we were kids, you know, low fat, you know, every house in the country had skim milk because it was better for you. Um, the problem is that when they took the, the fat out of the diet of Americans, they replaced it with carbs because the fat is what makes things taste really good. Now, steak by itself is pretty good, even if there's not a lot of marbling in it. But fat really is, you know, the fat's the flavor. So you know, 30 a week, you're still a little on the low side to, from some people. I know uh, with Sean ba Dr. Sean Baker. I don't do any eggs at all right now because I'm doing lion diet still. But he had, you know, he was just saying, yeah, I just ate about three pounds of this prime rib. I'll probably polish it off later this evening with a dozen eggs or so. <laughs> I can't imagine eating a, six, a half a dozen or even a dozen at full just eggs. I just, I, I can't do it. But... 30 a week, that's that's still pretty good volume. Good for you, Sally. Now, where am I at here? I have not. I have not had any issues with my gout. It may be the, not the bacon, but the pork itself. Um, I don't know, because I've been doing lion diet for the last couple of months, and I did very limited other stuff to begin with, um, when I started this way of eating, I've always been about 85 to 90% of what I eat is ground beef. 
with a few other things thrown in here and there. But, and I, I have no issues with my gout. I have not had a single gout attack since I started on, on this way of eating. And it's been next Tuesday, I think it is. Let me look at the calendar here real quick. Yep, next Tuesday is the seven-month mark. So hopefully I didn't, you know, just jinx myself and end up with a gout attack here real soon. Let's see here. Oh, 61. We're up to 61 people in the live. Amazing. Thank you all so much. Did I miss a super chat in there? I did. How did I do that? Oh, because I'm I'm using StreamYard and it only shows it if there's a comment with it. Or maybe I'm not scrolled down. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Patty Roberts, thank you for the $20 super chat. Thank you so, so much. You have no idea how much that means to me. Um, that's that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Patty. And I've seen your comments. You're into my videos a lot. Thank you very, very much. Now, where was I on the other comments? I just I saw a $20 st sitting up there. It's like, wait a minute. I haven't seen that comment yet. Okay, 63. Um, there's someone talking to Grateful Keto. Let's see here. They have issues with gout after you all that meat or issues with kidney function? No, I don't. Um, in fact, I've covered in several of my videos, JC, where prior to doing carnivore, my kidney and liver functions were both really high. I had stage one chronic kidney disease and I had fatty liver. And the last time I got my labs checked, which was, I believe, about the four month mark. So it'll be three months ago now, pretty soon. Um, my kidney markers and liver markers were on lower than they had been in forever. Now I can only actually go back and look at the most recent five years of uh, of blood work on the portal that I have access to, but no, I have I've had no problem with any of that stuff. And to be honest, I'm not really that worried about any of that stuff. Just like some people, you know, they complain about high LDL cholesterol. Um, considering how many things I have healed not just counting the weight loss but i mean my fatty liver is gone my diabetes is gone my stage one chronic kidney disease is gone my arthritis is 90 percent better my uh um, spinal stenosis is 90 percent better with all of that other healing and if you watch other people you know they heal lots of autoimmune issues you know with all of the healing that the carnivore diet does do we really think that because doctor says this lab is off a little bit that our body, because we're now eating ancestrally appropriate food and we're eating a lot of it, do we really think our body makes a mistake in that one or two little areas? I don't think so. I think, you know, whatever, whatever the labs say is what they say and they are still worth checking, but I wouldn't put a lot of stock in one thing like a higher creatinine or, or, or an EGFR because um, my kidneys are working great. Let's see what I've missed here. A lot of people talking to themselves, which is good. Yeah, talking about cauliflower rice as opposed to rice. Let's see here. Oh, there's a good one. Yeah, I fired my traditional doctor a year ago, working now with a naturopathic doctor. The old doc wanted me on statins. My cholesterol levels are much better on keto. Yeah, and they are. And there are some very specific instances where Dr. Barry and some of the other doctors I follow 
are still okay with statins, and that is primarily if you have already had a heart attack, then statins are probably a good choice for you. Um, but for the majority of the people out there, because I never had a heart attack. I did have a triple bypass surgery, and my cardiologist said I wasn't going to have a heart attack. I was just going to fall over dead. But I never had a heart attack. Um, and if you look at the research, um, read the studies, listen to Dr. Barry and several others, Dr. Chafee, um, Dr. Fung, all of those people will tell you that, you know, in most instances, statins are way over prescribed because given the actual, because they love to tell you that the, uh, you know, oh, well, this will decrease your risk by 50%. Well, that 50%, if you look at the, that's relative risk. If you look at the actual statistics on that, it's a difference between 0.5 and 1. So if you do the math on that, you would have to take statins and suffer all of the side effects that they have for 30 plus years to get eight or nine extra days of life. That doesn't seem like a very good deal to me. And I got a lot of people that say, oh, there's a Bob, have you ever made beef roast in the crock pot? Um, I haven't. I, I don't own a crock pot. I have kind of a slow cooker thing that I use when I'm at home. But to be honest, I, I take my roast. I put it in my skillet with a little bit of water, put the lid on it. Let it boil away till the top starts to change color and brown up a little bit. So, you know, the heat's circulating clear through. Then I take the top off of it. I dump the water out, crank the heat up on the skillet, and sear it on both sides, and it's done. That's that's how I primarily eat my roasts. 66! Woohoo! That's pretty awesome. Hi, yay, yay. How is everybody doing out there? It's here. Ah! I cannot pronounce. I think it's UAE Biff is, uh, but but this person is a regular commenter on my channel. So everybody say hello to him. I'm glad you're here or her. I have no idea which, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Okay. 61 watching and only four likes. Everybody jump on that like button. Okay. I appreciate that. I I can't see the likes because I'm actually in StreamYard here as opposed to what, doing what I did last time on YouTube. But I'll check that all out. Oh, 44 likes. Okay. So maybe it doesn't update for some people. It's hard to say. Let's see here. I want to make sure I don't miss any questions because we've still got... Oh, it's five o'clock, six o'clock on the East Coast already. So we got about 15 minutes to go here. Thank you, Sana. I'm a big believer in prayer, too. I hope that doesn't make everybody go bailing out of the channel, but I'm a Christian. I make no bones about it, and I believe in the power of prayer. Yes, I'm glad you pointed that out, Patty, because uh, Carnivore Quest, Cassie, has a really good chuck roast recipe for, I'm not exactly sure how she does it. Um, I watched the video, but I don't tend to remember that kind of stuff, because if they're using a piece of equipment I don't have, because I basically cook everything in, the, in my skillet. You know, I will occasionally put it in my big pot when I'm at home, and just let it sit there and bubble away for a long time. But I primarily cook things in my skillet down here. I have ceramic skillets when I'm at home, I use my cast iron. Um, and that's, that's how I cook stuff. But, but I've heard many people commenting that Cassie's chuck roast is amazing. From the UK Lincolnshire. Love your daily vids and your health achievements. 
Complete carnivore cured all my metabolic ill health. Zero carbs, zero fruit, zero veg. Way to go, Kim. That deserves a high five and a fist bump. Um, Lincolnshire. I have no idea what part of the UK that's in, but I I want to say that's northern, but I could be way off. I I'm I'm probably wrong. Let's see here. What am I missing? Oh, Sally said. Um, the spinal stenosis isn't actually reversing. I'm just, because there's less inflammation through my entire body, um, the inflammation around the areas has gone down, so I don't notice it as much. It's bad enough that I do still notice it on occasion. I mean, I can, I can always feel it when I walk. But it's not bad enough to keep me from walking. But I, I have noticed it getting better recently. Is again, so hopefully I'm about ready to make another big leap and improvement there. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't think spinal stenosis is something that will actually reverse. Just the inflammation around it, so that it's not pressing on your spinal column quite so hard. Uh, doctors are not used to the lab works of fat adapted people. When your body runs on fat instead of glucose, your LDL will be higher. No problems, no statins. Absolutely, Bert. Absolutely. And that's why if you haven't already gotten it, um, I would highly suggest the book that Dr. Barry and Kim Howerton just put out, Common Sense Labs. Um, they go over all of the labs in that book and they have what the normal labs are supposed to be and what they consider normal labs for people that are, you know, carnivore keto. So it's worth noting there are some differences. Let's see here. I have no idea what CRP or HSCRP level is. I'm not a doctor. All I know is that absolutely everything that I got checked, that my doctor checked, including the few extra things that I had him add in, like a fasting insulin and a C-peptide, everything was in normal range last time, except for my triglycerides and my HDL, which I got checked just a couple of weeks ago down here. I just had a standard lipid panel run and my triglycerides and HDL were very similar and both white right within range. I think my HDL was, I, I don't have it in front of me and I'm terrible at remembering numbers, but it was 60 ish, maybe 65. And my uh, triglycerides were, were down below 190 ish, 90 ish. So Considering they were 500 when I started this, I'll take that as a win and call it done. But I don't, I don't get hung up on labs because I feel great. I've gone from not being able to stand for two and a half minutes at a time without severe pain to the one day that I made a mistake and did the full loop that was actually like 7.6 miles. Um, so I'm not worried about it because even if whatever those initials stand for is something that I should be worried about, um, I'm not worried about it because I'm living so much more life now than I was seven months ago before I started this diet. If you were to tell me I was going to die in a week because of what I'm doing, I wouldn't change a thing. Not one thing. Because rather than sitting on the couch at home waiting to die, I'm now out living life again. So sorry, I don't, I don't, check any of that. I do still occasionally check my blood sugar just to make sure everything's okay, but I probably won't do that again for another three or four or five months now that I've, you know, I checked it when I got home from Thanksgiving dinner and my blood glucose was back down in the low 80s, so I'm not worried about that at all. I think I'm figuring out how to like beef more. You know, if you're trying to do ground beef, try it crispy. You know, just act like you're going to make a taco bowl but without all the other stuff. 
and just you know, let it almost burn. Make it crispy. I love it that way, but however you try it. No, no and no. I occasionally will take, um, I have a bottle of Keto Chow's Daily Minerals, and if I know I'm going to be out in the hot sun, I will take a little bit of that. And once or twice a week, I put just a couple of, I put a dropper full into my food um, just in case. I do not add organs to my diet. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of split theory about this. But the thing I would look at for organs, I go back to Kelly Hogan's story. She did the first, what, eight, nine years of her carnivore journey on just McDonald's hamburger patties. There's no organ meat in McDonald's hamburger patties, and she still looks fantastic. So um, now if you end up deciding that you're vitamin deficient, which you shouldn't be if you're just eating meat and lots of it and the associated fat that goes with it, but... If after, you know, four or five, six months, you're still like, man, I still feel a little drowsy or I don't quite have the energy I thought I'd do, do an N equals one experiment. Go buy yourself a little beef liver or something and add a little piece of that into your diet every day um, and see how you feel. Um, I base everything I do on how I feel. Um, and right now I feel great. 70, oh, we broke the 70 mark, and it went right back down again. A couple of people must have popped in, saw my ugly mug, and run off. But that's okay. But, yeah, I don't I don't eat organs. I tried it. I bought some tins of cod liver because Dr. Barry suggested it, and I opened one up and mixed the little chunks of meat into my ground beef and chopped them up, and I could still taste it in there, and... My house smelled like cod liver for a week. No thanks. I'm just not into it. Let's see here. Now I'm going to try and go a little quicker because we're down to about four minutes left. I don't know if it was gout or inflammation, but I could barely walk. Pain in lower legs, ankle, feet. That's all gone now. Hey, as long as it's better and you can walk, we got to win. 3 a.m. here. My goodness. 3 a.m. Well, I'm glad you woke up in the middle of the night to, to say hi. Let's see here. 11 p.m. in UK. I sort of knew that. Let's see here. 50 likes. Congrats. Yep. Welcome to everybody that's popped in here. Let's see here. I got a couple. I got time for a couple more comments here. I used to use cast iron. If I got another. And it was a healthy type of cast iron. I would get the season free kind. It was always rusting the old ones that needed seasoning. Well, I just, uh, I cooked up a bunch of ground beef and saved the fat because I'm told that beef tallow, beef fat, has a higher smoke point. And I bought the, they came pre-seasoned, but I got out a piece of sandpaper and ground it all down to smooth. And then re-seasoned it myself with, with tallow, and nothing sticks to my cast irons. Let's see here. Yeah, it doesn't need rocket science to figure out what's doing, that what you're doing is good for you. You've turned your health 180 degrees. Well, I think about some lab numbers. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, like I said, you know, once a year, you still want to go to the doctor and make sure, you know, because they do have some some labs that they can run to see if you if you're developing a cancer, which I'm not going to say carnivore cures cancer or prevents cancer, but it has been proven that cancers, most cancers, really like sugar, and if you're not putting any sugar in your diet, they're not going to be able to grow. Um, I don't even remember who I was watching. I was watching somebody that had a they were given like six months to live because they had a, an aggressive form of cancer, but they cut out all their carbs and 
they still have the cancer, but it hasn't grown any. And they're on like year four or five of their six months to live. So um, on that N equals one experiment and that one alone, I would say that not eating carbs has stopped the progression of their cancer. I'm willing to go that far. See here. here if there's eat some stuff sunday morning in australia 10 15 a.m best wishes best wishes to you too peter and we are now coming up on the end of our time together so we have 15 minutes to get ready for ready set keto anybody have any last minute questions they want to pop in there real quick i'll watch the chat for just a moment Yeah, no sardines either, as some have suggested. I do, there's a couple of uh, herring. Some places they're called kipper snacks. I have found a couple of those that I like really well. No, I don't. Um, I don't experience any swelling in my hands or feet after walking. None whatsoever. Um, let's see here. It says, sometimes I buy beef heart or chicken hearts, cook it in butter, and add some seasoning. It tastes like beef, not like liver. A bit chewier, perhaps, but not bad at all. Well, if it tastes like beef, I'll just eat beef. But if, you know, if, if you like hearts, that's great. I think it's very, I see no, I have no objection to people that like to eat organs. I mean, if you like the organs, there's no reason not to eat the organs. I haven't seen any studies that say you should not eat the organs. So I'm all for it if you like it. I just, I can't do it. I even, you know, back when I was uh, in college, I would go up to, to Miller's Poultry the day they butchered their chickens and get chicken gizzards because I got a great big bag of them for like 50 cents already fried up. But I just, I can't do that anymore. I just, I don't have the stomach for it. But thank you all for coming today. Yes, and Donna says maybe D3 if you don't get enough sun. And I agree with that as well. If, if you're not getting enough sun or you live north of wherever it is, basically the northern half of the United States or in that area, you probably uh, you probably need to supplement your, your vitamin D during the winter time. I'm below that line down here in North Carolina, and I'm out in the sun all the time. Um, as you can see, I'm actually from an area, I'm not lifting my shirt up to show you, my chest is pure white. I have tan all over the parts of me that get exposed, so I get plenty and plenty of sun. Um, I agree, there's something special going on here, Grateful Keto, and I'm happy you're all here. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I will see you in tomorrow's video, but I'll see you back here again live next Friday at the same time. Have a great day, everyone. Don't forget to go check out Ready, Set, Keto. They start in 13 minutes.